All right, everybody. I um, want to thank everyone again who is a part of this meeting. We are not going to keep you, I mean, any longer. We'll just get right to it. Uh, thank you. We have a new person who has joined. Khalifa, you're most welcome. So um, the Close House African Internship Program, by the way, I think it's safe to introduce myself at this point. My name is Noel Uloko. Um, I work with Close House as the Business Development and Operations Lead. Uh, I've been with Close House for a couple of years, started off with Close House in 2017, and um, we began the Clones House Internship Program. We piloted the program for the first time in 2019. So um, in the course of the program, we've you know, taken an adaptive approach and we have added some things, laid off some things. One of the chief additions that we have made is the learning placement component, um, which is why we are here today. Um, if you are joining as an interested host organization, we want to appreciate you for indicating interest to be a part of this great idea to groom and hone the next generation of African evaluators. Um, so we're going to move on. So um, the Close House African Internship Program is not just a generic internship program. It is specifically for fostering and fostering talent development and capacity building within the field of monitoring and evaluation. So it is specific to monitoring and evaluation. Close House has other initiatives that opens up, you know, the focus and the scope of the internship. But the Close House African Internship Program particularly is focused on talent development and capacity building within the field of monitoring and evaluation alone, but across Africa. Um, we have our headquarters in Nigeria, and of course, the first cohort we had, uh, we we're just limited to Nigerians. But after that cohort, we began to spread our tentacles because really, our own goal, our aim and objective, our mission as an organization is to enhance the practice of evaluation in our uh, and not just in Nigeria. So, background, like I mentioned earlier, it was initiated, the program was initiated in 2019. We get to host this program twice a year. And so we have our interns spend a minimum, a minimum of five months per cohort. Um, we have 47 interns so far that have passed through the program and 23 of them are now gainfully employed in decent jobs. Um, so getting into the components of the Clone South Africa Internship Program. First off, we start with a nine week basic and advanced online um, monitoring and evaluation courses. So what I what we mean by that is that once the interns are onboarded for the cohorts, they have a three week first, three week basic monitoring and evaluation course that is um, deployed over Google Classroom. Because like we said, it attracts interns from all around Africa. And so we really cannot do an in-person training. So the first three weeks is dedicated to having them learn basic monitoring and evaluation. Um, and then the six weeks following the first three weeks are dedicated to um, getting them to know more advanced concepts of monitoring and evaluation. So three plus six makes it a cumulative of nine weeks. Um, they also get to participate in evaluation designs. Um, in fact, I just got out of a meeting before joining this meeting. We have uh, an RFP that we are putting together for a bid in Somalia and the the interns get to participate in this procedure. So evaluation designs, they get to participate in value chains of data process management for ongoing projects that we have. Interns are involved, are actively involved, kick off meetings, um, check-in meetings for projects and, and all of that. The data process management also um, has them as a part of it. 
learning studies. When we have learning studies, we involve them as well. They get to be involved in baseline studies, developing evaluation proposals, and developing evaluation results. So after all of these have been done, we get to place them in an organization for three months where they can, you know, after all of this theoretical learning and then little practical experiences, the three months of the learning placement gets them to be fully, fully involved in hands-on M&E, practical M&E um, with organizations. And we have opened this up to different organizations so that our incidents are not just relegated to what Clones House is exposed to. We believe that M&E is vast. And so the, the more experience they can have, the richer uh, their learning experience will be. Okay. Uh, my screen is not responsive. All right. So, pardon me. I'm not quite sure why this is happening. Okay. So, on the next slide, learning placement components. This is where you come in as an interested host organization. So, we have and we're presenting an opportunity for interested M and E departments and organizations to host our interns, our CAIP interns for at least three months. It can stretch beyond that, uh, but the minimum is three months. And what we need you to do is to help provide our interns with hands-on experience, like I earlier said, and practical skills and practical skills development. Um, it can range, I know that um, data analysis, for instance, is a very hot topic. Um, within the M and E sphere, we would appreciate you involving incense in some of these skills, skills, and not just um, daily routine, but skills that will equip them to function in the male world. Um, we have incense who have, like I said, been gainfully employed beyond the internship program, but we also have incense who have gone on to be independent consultants. Now, that is only possible because within the course of the internship, they were able to get specific skills that can enable them to function independently. Okay. All right. So, um, of course, exposure to real-world M&E practices. Um, in the past, we've had interns, you know, who have been with host organizations that maybe once or twice a week, there is some sort of debate in the office where they get to talk about different um, M and E issues, you know, things that happen in the field and all of that. And those debates, I'll call them mild debates, you know, help to also brush up the knowledge of these interns so they can tap into the wealth of experience that people who have gone ahead of them already have. Um, next up is. Is is okay. All right, so criteria for selecting host organizations. You must be carrying out monitoring and evaluation work. You must have willingness to mentor our interns. Um, and the thing is that we get to do our background check. So we've had situations where in the past, you know, someone, a contact person of an organization indicated that they were interested in being a host organization. And upon checking, we discovered that the office was non-existent. So please, we need you to be a going concern, to be carrying out M&E work to have the willingness to mentor incense. If you have done this before, that is an added advantage. Um, you have to be committed to a three month hosting of the intern. You have to have, you need to have demonstrated capacity for professional development. Uh, so we are careful to know that wherever we are 
going to assign our intents to, there is the prospect that they will grow and that they will learn and that they will develop professionally in that atmosphere. Um, it, of course, has to align with the CAIP objectives, which I've shared prior to this time. You need to have a child and youth safeguarding policy. So after this meeting, we are going to reach out to you again to do some of these checks. Um, and then, of course, you have to pass our risk assessments because we also carry out risk assessments. Remember that these people who come for our internship program are young and emerging evaluators, so they are classified as youth. And so we have to have, we need to have a safeguarding policy. And even if they were into youth, every organization that carries out M and E project needs to have some sort of safeguarding policy that protects uh, their staff. All right. So what do you stand to benefit as a host organization of the Clones House Internship Program? You will get to access, you will get access to fresh perspective and innovative ideas from our interns because of course um i would like to mention that whenever we put out the application we have hundreds i think we've actually recorded a thousand before over a thousand before and imagine that we choose only eight out of such you know huge application uh so you can imagine that is the best of the best that we get to select so what you stand to gain is that from these bright minds, you also are able to access fresh perspective and innovative ideas in addition to the theoretical knowledge that they would have acquired ahead of the, inter the learning placement. Well, next is increased productivity through additional support. Um, we would also be supporting them throughout their internship program so you can be assured of that um, additional support. Uh, that leads to increased productivity of your interns and then of your work as an organization. Um, there will be opportunities. You start to gain opportunities for mentorship and talent development. Uh, I mean, as our interns get to interact with other staff of yours, there will be in, uh, there will be opportunities for cross uh, pollination and then talent development. Uh, you'll be able to contribute to the growth of future professionals in the field. Uh, and that goes to say that, you know, these interns will not be able to tell their story in the future without mentioning you. Um, the next is, the next benefit you stand to gain is to foster a culture of male within, within your organization. All right, and lastly, providing a cost-effective solution for short-term project needs. And um, by this, we mean that when you get to take on an intern from the Close House African Internship Program, the cost is on us. So we'll be paying them a stipend of $300 for the three months um, that they will be with you. Of course, if you feel you want to hand them anything, that's fine, but that should be out of your goodwill and it is never out of compulsion. All right, my screen has started again. Okay. Um, responsibility of, uh, responsibilities of host organization. Of course, we need you to mentor our interns. Mentorship is crucial. And for this, we would usually advocate that somebody within the organization is assigned because the mentorship component is quite, I mean, important and vital to us. So perhaps if you're here as maybe a HR person, we, what we are saying is that once we assign an intern to you, we need you to hand them over to a monitoring and evaluation expert. Could be the monitoring and evaluation uh, manager, within your organization because we need a seasoned ex we need you to give them work assignments we need you to supervise them um, we need you to help us integrate them into your work 
culture and we need you to look out for their safety and overall well-being just like you would do for any other member of staff within your organization um so close house is not without its own responsibilities um of course like i mentioned we are responsible for orientation and training as we onboard them we also give them continuous mentorship and support um we will be monitoring the entire process throughout the duration of the of the internship of the learning placement with your organization and we'll be getting feedback so we'll be having um at least by weekly meetings at most once a month with your organization um, based on some already established KPIs to know, um, to track the progress of the internship or the intern with the organization. Uh, we are also responsible for providing networking opportunities for host organizations. So at the availability or with the availability of host organizations, we can have cross-learning events um, where organizations can glean and learn from each other. Um, you may ask organization A, interact with organization B to know what is working for them during the learning placement, um, what wasn't working, how they went about resolving what wasn't working, and just to share successes and wins, challenges, and all that. So apart from that, of course, networking, there are endless opportunities for collaboration so long as MELD is concerned and um, we provide that opportunity as well. Compliance and safety, like we said, um, we ensure that you have a safeguarding policy. We also uh, ensure that you pass a risk assessment uh, test before we proceed with uh, the engagement for the learning placement program. Um, so. Interns also have responsibilities. Our interns are expected and told to be professional in their work with host organizations. They have to be committed to learning. They have to be adaptable. Um, they have to ensure that every task that you assign to them is completed within record time. Um, they have to have a team player spirit, be able to collaborate with other staff within your organization and of course represent CAIP well. So with that, I have come to the end of my presentation. Uh, if you have questions at this time, we'll be happy to take your questions. And um, before that, because I know that the end is somewhat abrupt, we have someone in our midst, who is a past intern. And I think I'm going to give her an opportunity to say hi, no, say one or two things. So her name is Rachel Oporong. Rachel, you want to say something to the team here? Yeah. Hi, Noel. Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Rachel Okorunko. Um, I was a past intern with Clones House. Um, that was the fall of 2022, from July to November 2022. Um, I think Noel had said everything. Um, yes, the internship is, or was, it was packed. It was intensive. The courses, um, having to get on projects, evaluations and all of that so yeah um i i am so glad that um you know this is happening and that you're interested in wanting to get interns placed in your organizations um trust me you are going to get the best of us yes the best of you know young and emerging evaluators who are out there to learn and also meaningfully impact in organizations they get assigned to. Um, yeah, it's also interesting to know that I have gained um, work with Clone's House too. And um, yeah, I look forward to, you know, the good things that will come out of this. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, yeah, do we have any questions? 
Rachel has said it all. And like we said, the internship program is for a minimum of three months. It can span beyond that. But at that point, we expect that um, host organizations can begin to remunerate them or retain them. So retaining interns um, after, beyond the learning placement program is totally acceptable. All right. So can we get questions now? Um, you can also send questions to abujafluencehouse.com beyond this time. Um, I I do know from experience that when we get to have meetings like this, maybe not the M and E manager participates. Maybe it's the the founder of the organization or the human resource manager. So you may not feel like you have the right questions to ask immediately. So if you do not have any immediate questions, you can send your questions later to abujaaklunshouse.com. But if you're here and by any chance you have a question, please raise your hands and we'll be happy to answer your question. Thank you very much. I'll give it a couple seconds. Okay, thank you, Dr. Amjad. Please proceed with your question. Yes, uh, thank you so much. This is very informative and uh, we appreciate your efforts uh, on this uh, a very good initiative. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, I'm just uh, wondering about the next steps. Uh, so you mentioned that you are going to reach out uh, to individual organizations to set meetings. So this will be the next steps or just, just yes, asking about be the, the next, next steps. Yes. Yeah, that okay. will be the next step. So we'll set up meetings to meet with you one on one. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. All right, do we have any other questions? All right, I'm going to count down from, okay, we can see a thumbs up from Khalifa. Thank you for that. So we know you're good. I'm still going to count down from 10. And if no one interrupts me with a question, we are going to call it a day. And then we'll be again, we'll be in touch with you again subsequently. Um, The week has already come to an end. So that will be sometime next week. Uh, You'll hear from us. So 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And with that, we have come to the end of today's session. Thank you so much again for showing up, and we will be in touch. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.